In today's video, I want to talk about TypeScript and namely why people want to use TypeScript instead of JavaScript. So as you know, TypeScript is basically uh, another language on top of JavaScript that compiles down to JavaScript. So it can use everything from JavaScript, except it also adds types. That's its main uh, purpose. Now adding types and really type checking is very important for the reasons I'm going to show you in this example. So to start things off, let's try to declare a class, right? A simple class, let's say, uh, we're going to call it square. Yeah, why not? It's called square. And it's just going to have a constructor. It's going to have X, Y and a size, right? Since a, a, all of its sides of a square sides are the same, I'm just going to call it size. And that's going to be the, the size of a length or a side of a square. Okay, so I'm going to say this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y, and this dot size equals size. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Next up, what I want to do is to instantiate one of those. So I'm going to say let sq equals new square. Okay, I'm going to give it I don't know five, five, and suppose I want uh, I don't know ten. Okay. And what I'm going to do next is just say let area and calculate the area of that square. So I'm going to say sq dot size times sq dot size. Okay, and I'm going to also, also log it to the screen. Okay, I'm just going to uh, add a debugger a breakpoint here and we're going to run this code. And what we should get is if we go here and actually type in our square, I'm going to get a square of size 10 x and y is uh, are both 5. And if I type in here our area, it will calculate it to be 100. So that is nice and all it's fine and dandy. Now what if for example, instead of saying size here, I mess up and uh, change this to be instead of size, just be length, right? It's a normal name to give it this to give the length of the side of a square. But I just didn't check the class and uh, this code is actually in another file, right? So another file. Imagine that this code is actually another file from this code and I didn't really check. I copy pasted some code from elsewhere and I ended up with this here. Now, as you'll notice, if I run this, the code will run just fine, right? It's going to get here and it's going to print out whatever is in this area variable, which is uh, nan. Right. Why is it nan? That's because uh, sq.length is undefined and any numerical operation on undefined is going to give us uh, nan, which is not a number. But the gist of it is we actually executed the code. We got here, we even gonna, we're, we're even going to print this, this on the screen without any errors. Right. So no issues here. Hmm. That's not great because imagine what if this code is inside a pretty large code base and to test this specific variable? Well, you don't have automated testing at your disposal. So you're going to have to do it manually. And actually the testing process takes quite a bit, right? You have to go through a lot of uh, hoops, right? So to find this bug to actually get to a breakpoint in here is going to take you, let's say half an hour to an hour to just find this bug and fix it is very, is very simple, but it's going to cost you a lot of time. Now let's head on over to TypeScript and do the same uh, exact, basically the same exact code as we did here. So in TypeScript here, I'm going to define here class uh, again, square. And since with TypeScript, I can just define them in the constructor like so. I'm just going to use this uh, way of defining it, but it's going to be the same exact way as we did with JavaScript. So public uh, x and that's a number, public y and that's also a number, and public size and that's also a number. Usually you don't want to have them public, but if you, in this example, I'm going to leave them public and of course have that be a function. Okay, so this is our square class. And again, uh, let square equals new square. And that's going to be 5, 5, and 10. So that should still work. And if I go let area equals square dot size times square dot size. Right, and I'm going to also console log 
our area. So again, if I go here at a breakpoint and launch this code, you'll notice that once it's done uh, compiling, you'll notice I'm going to get area to be 100. That's because I, I did say square dot size, I didn't say square dot length. Now what happens if I change this to square dot length? So if I close all these and say square dot length, well, I get red squiggly lines in the editor, that's fine. But suppose I have a primitive editor, I don't have Visual Studio Code. Uh, I'm not going to probably get that. But the key thing is if I try to run it, as you'll notice, I'm going to get an error saying here that property length does not exist on type square without actually running the code. So it, it didn't run the code because we didn't get to any breakpoint, anything. Uh, it actually did not compile from TypeScript to JavaScript because there was some sort of error when we type checked this uh, square variable, right? And as a programmer, this is very nice, right? You, you look at this and you're like, oh, okay. So it's in uh, y.ts at line 10 at uh, column 27. So I can go here and fix this issue. Right. But with JavaScript, you don't have this error message. You simply get nan, and it's one of those nasty ones where it's not even going to error out. It's just going to give you a uh, sort of number that's nan and it's going to go on its way and continue executing. With some errors, you might uh, get away with just, uh, for example, trying to get a property of undefined. So that's going to give you an error, but do note that that actually happens only if you execute the code itself, not at compiler because there's no compile process in JavaScript, right? So this is why TypeScript exists. It, it checks at compile time your code and sees, okay, this is an issue. This is an issue that's going to be the same in JavaScript, but here I am just giving it to you instead of you having to check uh, manually by uh, stepping over the code. This is what TypeScript helps you with. Now TypeScript, it's not annoying in the sense that it gives you these red squiggly lines uh, errors here because these technically are still errors in your code, even in JavaScript, except except you don't see it until you execute the code itself, okay? So it's sort of TypeScript helps surface errors at compile time. So when you hit an, uh, a key, it's going to check your code, type check your code, and it's going to say, okay, well, here's going to be an error that's still going to exist in JavaScript, except here I am giving it to you earlier, saving you like half an hour or an hour. Suppose we're working with a pretty large code base. And by pretty large, I mean hundreds of files. It could be hundreds of files and you're going to have to go through hundreds of lines of code to get to this line and see that error. Now, of course, using TypeScript does come with its own caveats, right? So first things first, it's going to be, well, yeah, sure. It's going to annoy you with the type checking part. So it's going to give you these errors, but that's more of a feature but then it's going to have you add types to most variables, right? So here I had to say that X, Y, and size is a number, right? Whereas in JavaScript, I didn't say anything about them. Yeah, they can be anything, right? Although it's, it's nice, it makes the most effort to actually figure out the types. So even if, uh, even if I didn't specify the type of square, the, this sq variable here, it actually knows that it's a square due to the fact that I initialized it with the constructor of that class. So that's very nice. And another issue, another caveat with TypeScript is that, well, if you're using a library, that library is going to have to provide, uh, well, typings for that project. If it doesn't provide typings, well, then TypeScript is not really that useful. And it's like you're using JavaScript for that library. But nowadays, many most popular libraries have typings in them. So you can actually use them with TypeScript. And really all I wanted to show you in this video.
if you do want more TypeScript videos in the future, do tell me down in the comments below or on our Discord server, as well as if you have any questions or suggestions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Bye.